So guys, there's no better way to put it. This is the best thing to have been announced in the past decade and quite possibly the most important product for Tesla in their entire lineup. Now, how everyone's going to take this is really dependent on how high they've set their expectation. Either this is the most mind-blowing thing they've ever seen or it's just going to be another one of those products that were going to come out sooner or later. How this entire event took place was quite interesting. It started out early in the mornings where everyone was prepared to the entrances as they were opening. While during this time, everyone was packed together, having fun, showing off their cars, and eating from various food trucks. It in itself was not related to the event, so it seemed like everyone was welcome to join with or without the golden invitation. Now, quite a bit of things was previewed even before the event took place. Just the night before, we got to see them testing out the drone shows indicating the date, location, and even the preview of Optimus. Then, early in the morning, the official Cybertruck page shared a video of what has gone down during that night before, giving us a preview of the set as well as the potential Sentry Mode feature on the Cybertruck. This then leads everyone to the studio tour where everyone was able to walk freely around and check everything they had been setting up. During this time, hours before the starting agenda, we had images shared of the main stage, the back streets, the buildings, as well as final preparation ongoing prior to the event. We got to see all the little touches they put throughout the studio, storefronts and names being changed out as well as a full-on DeLorean being taken out of a trailer. So on to the most important part and that is the event itself. We're gonna recap over all the little details that happened and then during the later end of this video I am gonna give you my personal opinion on all this sharing you every little detail and how I think that event should have taken place. The Robotaxi was unveiled for the first time matching the original design and sketches we've seen from a few years back, officially dubbed the Cybercab, it takes the same exterior look feel as the Cybertruck, giving a clear path into the future. Some additional details about the Cybercab that includes the Hardware 5 computer, an overspec chip with excessive computing preparing for what's next to come. Now in terms of pricing, Tesla aims to sell the Cybercab for around $30,000 but most of the early ones built will be prioritized for the internal ride hailing service. In a very brief slideshow, Tesla also goes over the methods of charging. It will be completely wireless, aligning itself and begins charging upon a arrival at home. According to Elon, the ETA for full self-driving and the robo-taxi will be sometime next year starting in California and Texas. Out of nowhere, as Elon was talking on stage, this huge spaceship looking vehicle rolls up and shocks everyone on stage. This cybervan was based off of the original design leaked a few years ago, spotted with the same design elements though without a steering wheel attached. It provides space up to 20 passengers and is intended for mass transportation with a ton of room for cargo and luggage at the back, this is going to solve a lot of congestion in high density areas, whether it's used for sporting events or concerts, it's going to significantly reduce cost of travel and traffic on the road. Then finally, we have some additional information shared about Optimus the robot. Tesla aims to eventually sell it for around twenty dollars to $30,000 and that its capabilities will continue with future software updates. This would include quote unquote anything that you want such as babysitting kids, mowing your lawn, walking your dogs and getting groceries. Elon states that he envisions a future where the cost of generalized products no longer require human labor and it will bring the cost of everything down. He further believes that Optimus will be the most significant product ever and that expects every single household to want one as soon as costs are reduced. So yeah, those are the three main products to take stage during this event and the most exciting part was seeing the Cybervan. This was a car that was completely out of this world but now we are going to get onto my personal thoughts about all this and what I think is the realistic expectation for the next couple of years. All right, getting down to it, of course, there's gonna be some goods and some bads, but overall, I think this event was actually a great win. Lots of things were unexpected as Tesla kept a really low key on every single product. If you had compared it to what we had seen earlier a few weeks back with the Cybercab, this is ridiculously crazy. What they had done covering it up in this yellow wrap and then padding all around it, they tried their best to make it look like a cartoonish car, but what was revealed is a car that looked so good and it would be a car that I would personally buy as a Model 2. This is even better looking than what we have with the Model 3 Highlands personally and man, this thing is 
one that will shock the world once you see it everywhere on the road. Now aside from that, there are a couple things here that I didn't really understand from the event and why they couldn't have added into the presentations to get the world to understand what they're trying to show us. There was literally no details about this RoboTaxi CyberCab, whether it's able to carry a baby seat in the front or the estimated range, if it's going to be running the same FSD stack, and when it's actually going to come out to the public. Ultimately though, with the ride hailing service, we are expecting full self-driving unsupervised to be as flawless as possible and this is even before regulars get their hands on it. That means that we are probably at least one to two years off and the estimated time frame of what Elon said with next year we're going to be seeing full self-driving unsupervised. This is kind of a hit or miss and a little bit far-fetched to be honest. Now also some additional things that I thought should have been part of this event that we didn't really get an answer for and it really bugs me up to this day and I think it really has to do with the fact that it's not going to be coming but I can always be surprised. You guys are surprised all the time with what Tesla has been doing through software. One of the main concerns is going to be about hardware 3 compatibility and whether it's going to work with full self driving unsupervised and is it going to be a part of that ride hailing fleet. But no words has been said. Right now they are saying that the RoboTaxi is going to be using the AI5 or the Hardware 5. But what about the rest of the car? Hardware 3, Hardware 4, as we've speculated, does need some fine tuning in software, but there was recent codes indicating that Hardware 3 and the images from Hardware 4 is trying to mesh together and there is a possible retrofit coming very soon. You want to check that out, I will have a link in the description below and up top there, but over there you guys will get an idea of how far along we are of the development and is Hardware 3 really going to be left behind? Now what's even more funny about this is while Elon was on stage talking about the hardware or AI5, someone yelled out Hardware 3 if it's going to be compatible or supported. So Elon sort of just brushed this away so I think it's quite disappointing. Maybe that's not going to be the vision or the future for autonomy, who knows? And then that's not even all. The weirdest thing about all this also is that how quickly they brushed upon everything, one of them being the wireless charger. Apparently the RoboTaxi is going to come with wireless charging, but then they showed a quick preview or slideshow video of it vacuuming or the car being vacuumed. This is completely different than what we were expecting. No visualizations of what the charging will look like, but we can only assume that it's gonna be a mat, you drive over it, it'll align itself, and that's where it's gonna start charging. So yeah, it sort of just ends at that. The entire presentation might have taken 15 to 20 minutes, and then they started focusing on the Optimus, and then of course the Cybervan. This was probably the coolest parts aside from the test drives themselves. But the Cybervan and even Optimus, the second generation, third generation, wherever they're at right now, there was no real detail of when it was going to come out, ETA, what kind of life we're getting, the specs, and all these things completely just hidden. We don't know as of yet. So I can understand why this is sort of disappointing to a lot of people. So all in all, to wrap this up, I'm a very objective person and a very data-driven, so I feel as though this is not for me, and especially it's not for Wall Street. As you can see with the stocks this morning, it completely tanked, mainly because of this, but aside from the stocks and whatever, because this is not a stock channel, I just want to say that it's always been like this with every new product unveiling. The stock does go down right away, but it'll eventually climb back up as Tesla proves what they do. Now, even with me sharing my opinions about the entire event, and it might not be as positive, don't get me wrong, I am not a personal planner, I don't know how to set up event stages and anything, but I do think it could be a little bit better comparing with maybe Apple or Samsung. This could have been a lot more thought through, but that's just how Tesla really rolls and Elon just makes it work as it goes. So I think this is actually a pretty good one, showing off their future products and once they do live up to their promises, the expectation is going to be set. That's where we're going to see the stock start to climb and everyone is going to be blown away once all of these cars are driving the streets everywhere. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy about all this. Getting an early preview into the future, there is a ton more to come out in the next couple of weeks with Juniper, with the next generation vehicle. I will be covering all of that, so make sure you guys stick around and hit that subscribe and that bell notification if you haven't already done so. And please follow me on Twitter at HeyJohnny. You guys can chat with me, DM with me, I will respond as quickly as possible and you get the latest news over there even before YouTube. This should be it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is John once again. Peace out.